the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On you, Husky! The wonder dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. Ezra Bailey had lived in the Yukon country for many years. He was too old to work very hard, but made his living by picking up stray dogs that had been abandoned by their owners, rehabilitating them and selling them again. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted was very fond of dogs and liked old Ezra. He often stopped at the little cabin to see the old man. It was a day late in fall, and Ezra and the Monty were looking into the runway beside Ezra's cabin at an old dog, part shepherd and part malamute, that was alone in the enclosure. Yes, sir, Sergeant. He's the only dog I have left. Sold all the rest of them after I got him fat and strong again. Got good homes for him, too. I'm afraid you're not going to have much luck selling this one, Ezra. He looks as if he's on his last leg. Yeah, poor old fella. He's been used mighty hard in his day. Sam Jenkins found him out in the woods. He was too weak to walk almost. Oh. Hi there, Jimmy! That's Jimmy Nelson, Sergeant. Comes here about twice a week. I'm the one whose father was killed, isn't he? Yeah. Him and his ma are having a hard time getting along. The kid loves dogs. How are you, Ezra? Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jim. Uh, you had? I sold them. All except this one. Gee, but he's skinny. <laughs> Poor old fella. I'm afraid he's not much good. He has a kind face, fella. <laughs> he's gentle, too. I guess I'll have to keep him till he dies of old age. Nobody'll want to buy him. But... Would you sell him cheap, Ezra? <laughs> if I could get him a good home, I'd give him away. He's going to take a lot of feeding. Ezra, would you sell him to me? Well, Jimmy, your ma don't want a dog. She told me never to give you one. Well, she'd like him after we had him a while. Ezra, I've saved up a dollar, and what would you... Uh, but, Jimmy, maybe your ma might be worried about feeding him. Dogs are kind of expensive to feed. Well, I've got it all figured out, Ezra. See, it's Mom's birthday tomorrow. And if I tied a ribbon on it and pinned a card on it saying happy birthday to the best mom in the world, <laughs> she'd like them. She'll own part of them then to herself. <laughs> well, that's one way of doing it. Why don't you let him have the dog, Ezra? Well. I'll stop at the store and contribute a case of dried fish to your mom's birthday party, Jim. Gee, that would feed him for a long time. Gosh, Sergeant, I can't let Oh, you... yes, you can, Jim. You see, one reason I'm doing it because you reminded me of the big thrill I had when I got my fish dog. I wanted him just about as much as you do this one. Well, Jim, I guess if the sergeant thinks it's all right, you can take him. Here's my dollar, Ezra. And, uh, I... Well, I think I want to be part of this here birthday party, too. Now, you take this dollar, Jim, and buy him a collar with it for your mom's birthday. Oh, thanks, Ezra. <laughs> I'll buy it on the way home. Come on, boy. <laughs> We're going home. Goodbye, Jimmy. I'll bring that fish over later. <laughs> Goodbye, Sergeant. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Come on, boy. Come Look on, at him, will you, Sergeant? He's as proud of that poor old skinny dog as if it was the finest malamute in the country. And that dog will respond to it, Ezra. He'll be a different animal in a month or so. Yeah, his mother's going to take my head off when she sees her birthday present. <laughs> Oh, they're having an awful hard time of it since Jean Wilder died. What? They can hardly scrape together enough money to eat. Well, I thought Pete Nelson had a good claim. Uh, not very. He was in partnership with Jake Ames. He's working the claim himself now, and giving Jimmy and Mrs. Nelson enough to live on. Jake says the gold vein has just about run out. There ain't enough it even for himself. Well, I'll drop in with some food for the dog every time I'm in town. There's plenty of dog food at the barracks, and I'm sure we can spare some. Well, that's mighty nice of you, Sergeant, but I'm sure glad I won't be around when Jimmy gives his mom her birthday present. <laughs> it's your birthday present, Ma. 
The card is on that ribbon around his neck. My birthday present. Read it, Mom. Read the card. Oh, you're going to be crazy about him. He, he has such nice eyes. Don't you think so? Why, why, yes, I, I guess he has. Here's the card. Happy birthday to the nicest mom in all the world. Oh, dear. And don't worry about feeding him. Sergeant Preston has given you a lot of dried fish for your birthday. Dried fish? Sergeant Preston? And see, Ezra gave you a dog collar. Well, I certainly never have had a birthday like this before. You, you like him, don't you, Mom? Well, of course, Jimmy. It was sweet of you to get him for me. Uh, but, of course, I want him to be half yours. Gee, you're nice. I thought maybe we could call him Happy. On account of, well, you know, Happy Birthday. Well, the name doesn't exactly fit him, but... but give me a Happy. Oh, nice old boy. Come on, that's a good boy. He likes you already. <laughs> well, maybe we can make him fit the name. Oh, thank you. Don't worry about taking care of him. I'll be 14 years old next week, and well, I'm going out to the mine and ask Jake to let me help him. Maybe if I work, too, I'll be able to get more gold out of it. Oh, no, dear. Jake says there isn't even enough for one person. Well, that gold claim isn't any good, I'm afraid. Anyway, he doesn't want to be bothered with you. Fred Davis helps his dad. Well, and Dad always promised I could help him when I was 14. Well, we'll see what Jake says when you talk to him. Jimmy, what are you doing here? It's my birthday, Jake. I'm 14. Well, it's a funny way to celebrate it, walking five miles from town in the cold. Well, you see, well, I thought now that I'm practically a man, maybe you'd let me help you here in the mine. And Dad said I could when I got to be 14. Hey, sorry, kid, but I can't use you. You'd just be in the way. This claim ain't worth the time you'd spend. Oh, but, gee, I... Jake, this piece of rock, it's got streaks of yellow in it. Jake, it's gold. Oh, that ain't valuable. It's just... Uh, but it is. Dad showed me how to tell. Well, I'm going to take this into town. Now, listen to me. I'm handling this mine. I know what's valuable and what ain't. Well, if this isn't valuable, you won't mind if I keep it. It's pretty anyway. Are you, uh, going straight back to town from here? Yeah. Why? I guess I'll walk back with you. It's late and I'm tired. Sure, Jake. Anytime you're ready. Uh, there's something I want to show you on the way back. It's off the trail a ways, but uh, it, it won't take long. What is it? Uh, you'll see. I, uh, I want it to be as... Sergeant Preston. Good evening, Mrs. Nelson. There's, there's nothing wrong with Jimmy, is there? Jimmy? Why, not that I know of. Well, leave some more dog food. Come in, Sergeant. Thank you. I think Happy and King will get along all right. <laughs> Quiet, King. Down, boy. Jimmy went out to our mine today, and he hasn't come back yet. Oh? I thought maybe he came back with Jake and was at his cabin. But it's so late, I, I'm worried. I thought maybe you'd seen him. I know I haven't seen Jimmy. Maybe I'm silly to worry, but he never stays out after dark like this without telling me. Why didn't he take his dog with him today? Well, it's a long way out to the mine, and Happy's feet are still a little sore. Oh. I wish he had taken him. Happy's been trying to get out to go after him all afternoon. They've been together constantly all week. I, uh, think I'd better go out and look for Jimmy. I hate to bother you, Sergeant. What's no trouble? Long past the supper time, and it's dark. He may have. Well, it's not like him. Where is Jake's cabin? It's part way out to the mine. I, I don't know quite how to tell you exactly, but... Well, would you mind if I went with you? Not at all. You can ride on the sled. And, uh, might be a good idea to let Happy come with us. Happy? Why? Oh, well, just in case Jimmy isn't at Jake's, Happy might be able to help us find him. Oh, Sergeant. You think something's happened to him, don't you? Now, don't get alarmed, Miss Nelson. It's bright moonlight, and I doubt that he'd get lost. Let's not worry until we know we have something to worry about. Here's Jake's cabin, Sergeant. Looking! Oh, oh, you have to... I'll find out if he's here. Who is it? 
Sergeant Preston, Jake. Young Jimmy Nelson here with you. Preston? Why, how did you... No, Jimmy ain't here. He was with you this afternoon, wasn't he? He came into the mine for a while. He didn't stay long. Ain't he home yet? No. Something must have happened to him. Well, uh, I'd better help you find him, Sergeant. Uh, just wait till I get in my park. That's a good idea, Jake. We'll go to the mine. Maybe we can trail him from there. I think we made a mistake coming way out of here. He's probably in town with his friend somewhere. We'll soon find out. Mrs. Nelson, I think we'll let Happy get off that sled now. I've had a hard time holding him here. Sergeant, what's happened to Jimmy, do you suppose? We'll soon know. Come on, Happy. It's going to be hard on you, fella. Find Jimmy, Happy. Where's Jimmy? Find him. I didn't know Jimmy had a dog. He hasn't had him long, but long enough, I think. He's going back along the trail where we came. Yes, and we're following him. That dog is plumb foolish, Sergeant. Jimmy wouldn't go off the trail into the hills like this. Neither would the dog if Jimmy hadn't. Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. oh, you husky! What is it, Happy? Found him, fella? Is he found, Sergeant? It's an old abandoned mine shaft. Hole so deep I can't see them. <gasps> Jimmy, are you hurt? Oh, son! Thunder, did he get down there? Here's the rope, Sergeant. Thanks. Guess you'd better let yourself down there, and we'll pull you both up if he can't hang on alone. I'll tie the rope to the dog sled and go down after it. As soon as I call to you, drive the dogs ahead. They'll pull me up. Uh, you want me to tie it? I'll do it myself, thanks. There. <laughs> Never mind, King. I'll be all right. There. I'm coming down, Tim. Be careful, Sergeant. It's so deep. Don't worry. Jake! Stop it, Jake! Don't cut that rope! No, I won't let get you! Away from you. Jake, get away from me! 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 in your own bed with Happy right beside you. He really saved my life, didn't he, Sergeant? Nobody would ever have found me after Jake pushed me into that hole. That's right, Jimmy. You see, uh, Jake didn't want anyone to see that piece of rock you picked up, full of gold. Jake wanted it all for himself. Jake must have discovered it after my husband was killed. Does that mean we're, we're going to be rich, me? No, ma'am. The mine will be all yours. Jake won't need any gold where he's going. Keep this dog away from me. I don't know how to thank him, Sergeant. Well, it's happy you should thank Mrs. Nelson. He's probably the best birthday present any mother could have had. All right, King, I'll take over. Come on, Jake. We're going into town. copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit. And all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Larry McCann speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network. <laughs>